Hey, welcome back. Uh, Preston again with another Press and Go video. I've got a fun one today. I've been wanting to do a video about something that uh, very much interests me. I think it interests you. That's probably why you clicked on it because you had a heads up with the uh, title of this video as to what we're doing. But we are going to take this F-150 Lightning that my friend owns and we're going to tow my travel trailer. I currently tow it with an F-250 that has a 6.2 liter gas motor and to be honest it tows it great it does fine um, the load is way under what its capacity is um, it is a gas motor so i don't have a turbo i live here in colorado springs we're at six thousand something feet elevation and i certainly would love a, a turbo but you know what this thing doesn't get bothered by altitude and it has a tremendous amount of instant torque which when you're towing, that's fantastic. You want some torque. Um, I will admit where we're gonna go today, we're gonna take, we're gonna pick up my trailer from the storage lot. We're gonna tow it up the mountain past Woodland Park, past uh, Florissant, Lake George here in Colorado, and go out to the Pike National Forest where my family likes to go camping on a regular basis. And I'm gonna see, could this truck work for me? You know, on a, obviously a whole different story if we talk a longer road trip. But we don't do that that often. When most of our trips are up to the, the forest, we can do a quick trip, go camping, and can we go up there, potentially stay a few nights? We're not gonna stay the night, but could we stay up there with a few nights and then make it back home with this electric vehicle? So, should be a fun video. Um, if you're new, new to the channel, please subscribe. If you're returning, thank you so much. If you see any of the products in this video and you happen to own that company, like uh, say Dr. Pepper, um, feel free to sponsor me because I love your company. Um, and there's a few other things that um, are in this truck that we're gonna talk about. There's some sweet seat covers my friend Richard has on here. You can sponsor me. Um, I am open to sponsors. But I know that literally out of the 10, I have tens and tens of followers right now and subscribers. And so if any of those tens of tens of subscribers are in these companies, feel free. Otherwise, let's go see what this thing can do. Let's have some fun. I am not here to debate whether an electric vehicle should be towing trailers or whether it's the best thing to tow. There are different use cases and we're just gonna see if this F-150 Lightning fits my family's most common use case, which is going camping in the National Forest here in Colorado and climbing up a mountain to get there. So let's do it, let's have some fun, come along.
quick, let's, uh, let's give you a quick look at this truck. We'll do a walk around before we get up to the trailer. Um, introduce this truck. This is an XLT F-150 Lightning. Um, it's, I don't know the actual name. Do you know the actual name of your truck color? It's like a gray, a blue gray. And it, this is one of my favorite Ford colors right now. Um, I wish they, they don't actually still make the 2024 in this color. This is a 2023 color that they have stopped using and I love it. Um, it looks great on their vehicles, but XLT package with the extended range battery. Um, this one does not have the max towing package, so we don't have a trailer brake controller. Um, so we're just going to take it easy and, and obviously um, ho hopefully we'll be able to, to experience exactly what we need to with my travel trailer. Um, but all electric truck, all electric. So um, not a hybrid, it's not a diesel, it's just all electric. And I think um, what Ford's done here is appeal to the person who says, I don't want everyone to know I have an electric vehicle. I just want a truck that looks like any other truck and I'm just getting a different powertrain. And I think that's for the most part what Ford has done. We've got a few um, signature things. You know, you got this uh, DRL that goes across the front that you can obviously tell this is a Ford F-150 Lightning. But for the most part, this is an F-150 that they've swapped out everything dealing with the um, internal combustion motor for electric motor. I do like the front end. I think it looks, I, I really like this. It's kind of common on electric vehicles to do kind of a, across the front uh, DRL. And then you've got your uh, LED lights here on either side. Not a lot of, you know, your grill isn't like your typical vehicle where it's got a whole lot of shutters or openings for air ventilation because what really needs ventilated is underneath the battery. And so that's where their, their ventilation goes to. You got a charge port on the side here. So driver's side. Um, does not have the NAX port. This is a J1772, I believe is what it is. Um, port and is a DC fast charger. Um, these vehicles are authorized to use some of the Tesla charging network, but Richard has experienced that um, they're gonna take their sweet time getting those adapters out to their owners for whatever reason. So he cannot currently use the Tesla charger, so he's not gonna have any feedback for us today on that. But maybe in the future we'll be able to get that and, and see what that charging experience is like. But he can charge at home and he can hit up a fast charger from Electrify America or ChargePoint or whoever. Um, going around, bunch of cameras. Most electric vehicles are gonna have a lot of cameras on them. Um, check out the inside here. This, as I said, He's got um, these covers. These are made by, what is it, Car Leo Leather? Anyways, they're super comfortable, um, but they go over top of his fabric seats, which honestly, Ford seats are super comfortable. They're some of my favorite seats, but I really like, you know, this is all somewhat soft touch. I like the styling, it's like the, a denim look. It just looks really clean. The inside of this truck is very clean and has the, the workstation in the middle. So this flips up to be a flat workspace. This will go down um, to be able to allow for that flat workspace. This one has the 12 inch screen instead of the optional vertical screen, which you can get on some of the other trims. Honestly, they're both huge screens. This one is super practical. It shows everything that you need very well. And, uh, and so let's see what, what it lights up here. It's not gonna light up for us because Richard's standing back there, but we'll get a, a picture of that. Um, but it shows everything you need. This is one of the few electric vehicles right now that actually has a push button start still right there. Kind of nice. Like I said, this feels like an F-150 with any of the other motor choices for the most part. There are obvious differences. I recognize that. Big back seat, tons of space, tons of headroom. 
This does not have a panora panoramic sunroof or any sunroof of all, which in my opinion, that's how they all should be because these electric vehicles just work to keep the cabin cool where everyone's tinting them dark anyways. What is the purpose of it? But I would rather have a solid roof personally than any kind of panoramic roof, but that's me, that's Preston. Let's see, we got Wrangler Goodyear Territory tires. We got 275, um, 60 R20, so these are 20 inch rims. I think they look nice. It, it accents this color really, really well. You've got the, the lightning insignia here on all the beds, which is really nice. Coming around back, pretty straightforward. It's got the um, push button tailgate and it soft open. And then this one has the, the step in the bed, it's the old man step and bar. And frankly, I don't really care because I think it's wonderful to get up there. You know, GM, GM's gone with the uh, corner steps and even the new Super Duty's kind of gone with that. But this is super practical other than having to pull it out and uh, do that whole method. I'll have to put that away with two hands. Pro Power on board. Is this the 2400 or 7200, Richard? 7200. 7200 um, watt hour of power so you got uh, let's see we got a couple of 120s there's a 240 let me get over here so you got a 240 right there and then uh, two four 120 volt outlets on this side which that's great this this truck is built and marketed to be able to backfeed your house in case of an emergency and I know we've heard recently of, of that happening in some states like Texas where they've had natural disasters that have knocked out power and they've been able to basically use their vehicle as a generator, which sounds great to me. Again, passenger side, sorry, we got a few, all our camera equipment there, but it's just a nice roomy truck. If you're familiar with an F-150, this is not anything new to you. You got a glove box, a couple of power outlets here. Just another 120 and a 12 volt. Over there is where the trailer brake controller would be if this truck was equipped with the max tow package. Um, so yeah, this one has a, looks like another glove. Does this open, Richard? There we go, I got it. Got to be smarter than the vehicle. And then another fairly side one. There, whoop, that one popped back open. Anyways, that's just a quick walk around of this truck. See, electric vehicles have a, a frunk. This one's got a pretty, pretty large frunk. Um, so I fit my clubs very easily. I did have to, I guess, take the driver out and stuff, but you got even more charging ports, four more um, 120 volt charging ports there on the left side. And then you do have under the uh, floor storage and this can be a cooler. So you actually put ice in there and beverages when you have your, your tailgate party and whatnot. So yeah, really nice to have this extra space that is lockable, that's sealed, and you can kind of store stuff in there without having to leave it in the cab when you have the truck bed. So pretty cool. Close it up. Um, yeah, really nice truck, very comfortable to sit in. I'm excited, it's gonna be a cozy ride. This thing weighs quite a bit because of the battery, so it should ride pretty well towing my trailer, which isn't that big, it's just long but it's your typical young family ultralight travel trailer. It's uh, made by Apex. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we go pick it up. So why don't we do that now? Let's load up. We'll head over to the storage unit and get our trailer and hook it up and head out. So we'll see you over there. All right, we're off to get the trailer now. We're in the truck, loaded up and uh, 
see how that does for our noise. Um, looks like I have a dark spot on my mustache there. Do it. Right there? What I do? like it's showing in the camera, but we're going to find out. Anyways, I do not have a giant, you know, uh, beauty mark right here. Anyways, this is Richard. Richard is the owner of this F-150 Lightning, and so thank you, Richard, for taking your time uh, to share with all of us um, your truck so that we can have a better idea of what are the capabilities of this truck relative to our lives and what we do. And for today, we're going to figure out how it works for Preston's life, towing my trailer to where my family likes to go camping. And uh, spoiler alert, I'm not telling you where I go camping because I don't want all of you there. Okay? And uh, so, but Richard, F-150 Lightning 2023, you've had this truck how long? Uh, about five months. Five months. Okay, so you've, you've had time to kind of massage it. Now, if you remember from our earlier video, we did the uh, Mustang Mach-E, which was a loaner vehicle to Richard, um, while this truck had to go back to the factory. It did. And, but that was not for anything relative to the truck mechanics, right? No. All aesthetics, it was a paint job, right? It was, there was a scratch on the driver's side door. Okay, um, and so, how much time did you lose with it there out of the five months? Oh my goodness, probably a month and a half, maybe two months. Okay, so that was gone a long time. It was. Um, but it looks beautiful. The truck turned out um, really nice. And so you've had a few months uh, to drive this around, and I already know your answer, but tell me, what do you think about this truck? I love this truck. I was skeptical at first because it's an electric truck. Yeah. But when I got in and test drove it, it was, I was sold. And then when I started driving it as an owner, I love it even more. And I drive out to a, a Space Force base that's a ways away. And with a, with a gas engine or a diesel engine, I'm pouring money into it. This one, I just take it home and charge it every night. Which, to be fair, you, to, your comparison was you did have a uh, Ram 1500 with a Hemi in it. Yep. Um, and so you, you do know... I do. What your costs were roughly. I mean, you were putting, how much do you think you filled up with the Ram? Uh, I think I was filling up maybe twice a week. Twice a week. Yeah. And you just charge this at home, right? Yeah. So you, have you ever had to fast charge this? Uh, I did it once just to see what it was like. But you've never had to otherwise. Never you just charge this. Your day-to-day -day is not ever interrupted by needing to get charged. No. So. And honestly, too, like, sorry. No, oh, you're good. Charging this thing at home. Um, I've seen literally like a 30 to 40 dollar increase in my monthly utility bill which we all know if you're filling up twice a week for fuel you're spending way more than that yeah. on gas yeah. well that's good so it's working out for you it's working out um, yes. to your benefit from what's important to me which is your wallet other than the fact that you bought a new truck and you have a payment <laughs> yeah. but who people buy new vehicles all the time and you get you get benefit from that this is a, a comfortable vehicle it's a gorgeous vehicle and so, yeah, it's expensive to buy a vehicle, but what vehicle isn't expensive these days? So you're enjoying the experience that you want. So I, we don't really, I don't really feel like that should weigh in. Here we're comparing, you had a gas vehicle, now you have an electric vehicle, and you're seeing savings from your day-to-day -day cost of running that vehicle. Yes. Not necessarily the cost of ownership, no. but I'm sure the other one wasn't a free truck either, so let's be fair. Yeah. Um, so, just so we all get an idea, is this the first time you're going to tow with this vehicle? Yes, it is. Okay, I'm so... I'm really looking forward to this. Okay, so this truck, as we said earlier, does not have the max tow package from Ford. It so it does not come with the trailer brake controller built into it. Um, this trailer we're towing, so this should be rated... Do you know what the rating on the tra trailer is on this uh, truck? I don't remember. I knew a couple days ago. Was it 10,000? I think it was around 10,000, yeah. yeah. It's, I'm pretty sure that's what I saw was 10,000. Um, the standard battery, I think, is 7,700 pounds towing, and the, the extended range, 10,000. So the max towing doesn't really affect the towing rating, but it will give you a bigger cooling package for the battery, um, and it does give you the trailer brake controller and some of the towing things. But th 
this truck is still very capable of towing and today we're not really putting it to a, a massive test with towing it to its limits or anything. Um, so we're sitting at, uh, it's cool because on the screen it says we're at 6,870 feet right now. So we are going to gain elevation. We're going up the mountains um, to the backside of Pikes Peak into the Pike National Forest and we'll see what altitude we um, gain going there and that is certainly going to have an effect on our battery range. Um, right now without a trailer on it does say that our range is 314 miles um, and so let me here I'll just all right so here we are this is my trailer this apex this coachman uh, apex ultralight we got the f-150 backed up to it and so we're going to hook it up and see what it is so let me go tell you a little bit about our trailer it's a coachman apex ultralight as you can see we use this thing lights and it sits out here in uh, the sun and just bakes so it's gets a little worn um, but we've had a lot of fun family memories in this thing it is a 28 foot model but from the uh, hitch here all the way to the bumper is 31 feet so it's about as long as you want probably with a half ton so that's what the f-150 lightning kind of is anyways is a half ton and then if we look at its capacities so this trailer has a capacity of 7,000 pounds total and it's currently um, sits so we can have so 7,000 we can have 1787 uh, pounds of cargo and water and all those things so that means we've got about 5,213 pounds is its dry weight and so should be well within the the limits of this f2 or uh, f-150 lightning and uh, really the thing that always has gotten me with this trailer is it's a big wind sail and it has a tendency to control the tow vehicle if you don't have the right tow vehicle so my f-250 is overkill for this but my f-250 weighs plenty this f-150 lightning weighs plenty and so this trailer doesn't tell it what's to do it's not a the tail's not wagging the dog on this situation so let's see what we do so let's back it up let's get richard hooked up here so we've got it ready we got our weight distribution hitch we're gonna back this thing up Come back just a bit. All right, we should be good there. All right, so we got all hooked up. Just lifting up the uh, the jack. We got our weight distribution hitch hooked up, which we're gonna use for this, just like we would anyways. I use it on my F-250, frankly. And uh, it actually looks like it's sitting fairly level. So here we go, this is gonna be fun. All right, so I wanted to show you guys the setup. So um, when you have a, a brand new trailer, like this one is to this vehicle, you plug it in and then let's walk around. We'll get in the passenger side here. And I'm gonna show you the setup for the trailer. So this has a whole setup. So this is the setup menu. So we're gonna add a new trailer, right? I'll let you just do, you, I'll let you do it and we'll talk through it. So right now, let's be clear, 306 miles of range currently on the truck. So he's naming it the press and go trailer, which it is. Okay, so this trailer's 31 feet. Okay, I think it's eight and a half feet wide. I'm pretty sure. We'll go with nine feet high. I don't know the exact height. And then it's GVWR is 7,000 pounds. Okay. So that's what we put in. This is what our information we're putting into the computer. And then when he hits enter, I want us to watch what happens over here. He hits enter and it changed our range to 157 miles. Now, the caveat is this message. 
it will take a few miles, darn it went away, for it to calibrate before it uh, gives a better estimate. So 157 miles is what it's currently estimating. Um, does it give you a percentage of battery that we're starting at? I mean, it looks like it's close to 100. I don't know if we, do you have a battery setting in your menu here? Let's see. No. Trip energy. Um, actually, can we? Do you have a trip that we can reset for this from when we leave here to get our kilowatt, our miles per kilowatt? Like it's trip two. Trip two, nothing. Actually, this. I mean, I guess we're not going to stop. I guess we might turn it off. Let's. Can we do two? Yeah. So let's see, how do we reset it here? We guess we gotta be electrical engineers to know what we're doing here. I guess we should have practiced this stuff. I don't know how to reset your trip. Can you reset it on the dash? Is there an okay button or something? So either one, you want trip two or trip one? Uh, let's do trip one because that's the one that's coming up. Okay. So we'll reset for trip one. All right, so you're 2.3 miles per kilowatt right now. We've reset it, the trailer's hooked up, so we're gonna get an idea of what the uh, range overall is. And we're gonna get an idea of what we use miles, how many miles per kilowatt we're gonna use for this trip. So we're in tow haul mode. Right? Oh, actually, no, I need to set it to that, so I'm just going to go over settings. And there's a towing. Towing, okay. Um, it may show, it does show a trailer over there on your screen by the southwest, so maybe it is on. Yeah, it is on tow hall. Okay, so we're in tow hall mode. All right. Remember, we trip energy in this room. Trip energy. All right, so we'll set off. We will give you an update again. Right now we're at 6,955 feet. That's where we're starting. We're in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and we are going to head over the top of those trailers towards Pikes Peak on the backside into Pike National Forest. We will check back with you in a little bit. All right, we're off. Got all our checks. First time pulling out with the trailer behind this thing. So far, we're going one mile an hour. Four, our range, four. four miles an hour, and we have not changed our range yet. This is a very scientific test. Got our Red Bulls. Well, to be fair, Richard doesn't. We're going to stop and get you. I guess I won't know more now. He's really sacrificing because now I don't have a Red Bull. <laughs> so get out of this place. We'll see you on the on the road. We'll give you an update. We'll, we'll tow for a minute and see what it feels like and, and uh, give you an update here shortly. All right. So, okay. So we stopped at a fuel station. We don't need petrol. Uh, but we just stopped here to get snacks because it's still great places to get snacks, our gas stations. And when we turned it off, our miles per kilowatt for this trip, for whatever reason, went away. We were at 1.7 when we stopped. And at the time, our range said 146, 46, 47. And then when we turned it back on, it jumped down to 128. So, not sure what it's doing to calculate there that changed it, but that is that is where we're at. So, we will give you an update again, right? We're just on Highway 24 now. We're about to go up Highway 24. We'll touch base before we hit the mountain to climb up into the mountains. And we'll see what the consumption changes to at that point. 
So we're off. So let's talk, take a left here. Let's talk a little bit um, about what the experience has been and uh, get your your thoughts, Richard. Uh, you've been driving. Um, tell me what your what your impressions are. This is the first time you've towed with this vehicle. And how's it going? You asked me right as I put a chip in my mouth. I did. That, <laughs> I did that on purpose. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, so it's going great. I actually, I'm actually quite impressed with how well it's going. Um, as far as power is concerned, I've got plenty of power. Uh, there is a little bit of a bump. Bounce. Bounce, yeah. Um, but I think I think that may be because the sway bar is, is configured to be your truck and not mine. Yeah, I think I, I, yeah, I just set the state the weight distribution hitch. I just set it up to the way I have it with my F-250 because I didn't really know how to adjust it for this. Um, it does seem a little bouncy and I probably could have adjusted it at our stop there, but I did not. Um, so hopefully, I mean, we're not going that far today. If we need to adjust it when we get to our turnaround point, we can do that, but it is a little bit bouncy, but not in a, it's not a, a detriment. It's just, you can just feel the trailer bounce in the truck a little bit. So, okay, so our trip meter just came back to where uh, we were with, now it's at showing 1.8 miles per kilowatt for this trip. We've gone 18.7 miles, uh, and currently still, again, 128 miles of range, but we're still showing, this doesn't show us an actual percentage, but best I can tell, we're somewhere in the 90 range for uh, percentage of battery left. When I turned it on at our stop just now, it said 90%. It did say 90%. It did say 90%, yeah. It's weird that it says it when you turn it on, but you don't have an easy way to see it yeah, on I'm your dash. I and might maybe, be able to switch that, switch it around so we can see it. Maybe there is it. You gotta set it all up. It's there's so many settings of these things, so you gotta play with it. But anyways, it's been a good experience so far, and there's plenty of power. It's not a power issue, um, and the regen braking, regenerative braking, has been nice. Has we we have noticed we looked for a way to set the regen braking to be more aggressive and we couldn't find one. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just means that the two of us we're not smart enough to find it if it's in there. Um, but what we've noticed is even in tow haul mode, the regenerative braking is not enough to bring this to a stop. You know, you still have to use the brakes. So this is gonna. Whereas daily driving, it can bring it to a full stop, easy peasy. Yep. With a trailer behind it, it's, it is not using that. Now, what I am a little bit curious, obviously, the truck is taking the full brunt of the braking because we don't have trailer brakes on the truck, which is weird that it doesn't have the ability to still send that even if you can't adjust it manually. I don't know. I've never played with that stuff. I, I've always had a trailer brake and um, in my vehicles. We should have probably got one. You know, it's embarrassing. I actually have a separate one at my, at my house. <laughs> I got off work this morning and it's just been kind of a, it's been a long morning. Just so we can turn around and go get it. We can just turn around and go get it. <laughs> yeah, because we definitely don't need that range. So, tell you what, we'll go up to the mountain, come back and get it when we get home. How about that? Sounds great. All right. So, here shortly, we're going to hit the mountain. We're going to hit our in our uh, ascent up the mountain. We will see how it's doing, and that's when we'll check back in with you and see kind of what it's doing to our range. We're at 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour to get from my house or where the trailer's stored um, to essentially across the city of Colorado Springs to the base of the incline part of the Highway 24 going up to the mountains. So that's pretty reasonable, I think. Um, there are vehicles that get that normally, I think. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's still pretty low for a UV, but we'll check back in with you in a little bit as we're going up the mountain.
All right, so we just got a notice of driving range is low on this, and I'm going to pass you that. Let's take a look at where we're at for our trip so far. We're um, 119 or 20 miles, 120 miles basically, of uh, distance that we've traveled. It's showing, it says 29 miles of range. We're about 25% of the battery remaining on the dash. And we're getting uh, 1.2 miles per kilowatt. So we pretty much, since our last video, went from when we got into Woodland Park all the way till halfway down our trip on I-25 to um, Guard of the Gods, it was like 25 or 30 miles and it didn't, uh, it didn't move our range guess. It was right around 35% battery on the dial for that entire time because of regenerative braking. And so we did gain quite a bit of distance by coming back down, um, but we didn't necessarily see it climb. We just saw it hold. It just kind of held at the same uh, range. So pretty good. We'll, we're almost home. So we'll, uh, we'll give our final numbers when we get where we're going. I can't imagine they're gonna be a whole lot different than what you're seeing now, but wanted to update you that um, at 30 miles of range left it gave us the low range notification so okay so let's let's kind of give our final thoughts on this trip 124 miles uh, it took us three and a half hours to do our whole thing but we we weren't driving that whole time so we spent a fair amount of time in this vehicle one Number one is such a comfy ride, such a enjoyable experience as far as comfort and ride quality. Um, the bounce, I think we've, I think we can account the the bounce to the weight distribution system, um, but it very smooth ride. And then the other big thing for me was the power just was incredible. Um, we were merging on to the highway when we came back into town and we were still at like 20, 25 to 30 percent of uh, state of battery charge and zero degradation of power so we had full power and what normally is pretty difficult for my truck to get up the on-ramp it's pretty steep at Cimarron if you're familiar with Cimarron and I-25 headed northbound um, in Colorado Springs pretty steep and my truck I really got to punch it. I got to rev the engine and it was like, it was like there wasn't a trailer behind us getting on there. And that was impressive to me. The, the, the acceleration was just really, really nice. Um, what were, what did you take away from it? Anything different than those two big things? Not really. I mean, the, the bumps, even, even though we keep calling those out, they, I, I don't think that there was, it was that big of a deal for me. It wasn't um, that bad. It, it, uh, we're making it sound like more, but it, yeah. it just was when you, when you expect like a perfectly smooth ride, like this is day to day, I guess it just felt like it, but you're right. We probably made a, a much bigger issue out of that than it really was. But it's good to call it out I yeah. know, so that people know what to expect. But, um, and then the other thing like you were talking about was the, the power. That's, that's the one thing that's continued to impress me about this truck from the day I got it is the amount of power that this thing has from, does, doesn't really matter. Like you were saying, doesn't really matter if you're at, um, 20% battery or 100% battery, you're gonna get that power, you're gonna get that instant acceleration. Um, this thing blows me away, uh, zero to 60 and 3.2. Yeah. It's just a, a beautiful truck. I love the way it runs, it's just, it's great. I would be curious if there is a power drop off at some point, I'm, mm -hmm. there's gotta be at the low end of the battery, I just wonder what percentage, to, yeah. if that's in the, I would assume that's less than 5% of battery before it really starts to throttle down, which when you're towing, you you that that's a big deal you don't want to get to the bottom end and you're like oh well i don't have enough power to get to the charger that's just down the road mm -hmm. you know you're already trying to get the most out of the battery that you can because it's um shorter range that overall is still the biggest issue when towing i i, I will say that the range is not as big 
or it, it's not as big of a range um, for traveling in between um, charging and really that becomes an issue in the fact that the infrastructure is not there right. if there was a charger everywhere there's a gas station on the way to my destinations i think it would not it would not be a problem but there sure. isn't yeah. there's not a charger there um, but i'm still going to walk away shocked and surprised at how this did i was i was super impressed that we made it all the way to where we camp we would have been able to have enough to stay um, and and get back without an issue, I think. And even still, you know, I know there's people that will hate on this comment, but I would have hooked up my little super efficient uh, generator and charged it and run my trailer. You know, if I hook my 2000 watt generator to this truck and then hook my trailer into the 7200 watt output, I get full output to my trailer, whereas my little generator, but my generator can run and continue to charge this. My my trailer what isn't charge isn't drawing 2,000 watts of power continuously off my generator, and so a lot of that I think is idle time. I think a lot of that's wasted energy, whereas I think it would be utilized here would be stored and then used properly, and I think that still is a benefit. So again, don't hammer me with any of the agenda items because I don't buy into that. It's just a phenomenal machine. Yeah. The power, the, the way that it utilizes power is pretty impressive. And the day this gets a bigger battery or it gets a battery that has better energy density, it, it will be even better than it was today. Um, now, if I, ha I don't have the money to go and buy one right today. <laughs> I, I don't, so if I were to answer that question, would I buy one and, and sell my F-250? I still would need to do a few more trips where I do need to charge, where I need to, to see that experience. Cause today we didn't charge. Um, and we may do that. We talked about maybe taking it down to, to you know, Southwest Colorado. And the problem is there's just, the charging infrastructure is, is not there. And I know that's similar across the country. They're, they're popping up more frequently, but they're still not as dense as you need to really be comfortable. One of the things I will add too is, um, it, and Preston, you and I were talking about this a few minutes ago, Ford has done a really good job with their app and being able to plan your trip in the Ford app. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, just, it's, they've done a really good job telling you how far you can go before you have to charge. Yes. Like uh, when you get to a specific point and they say, oh, you need to charge, tonight before you leave in the morning or you're not going to have enough power to make it to the next charging station mm -hmm. so they've done a really well really good job with their app there are some things that are a little bit a little bit uh quirky right but they continue to to work out those quirks and and uh have releases for their app that, that i mean it overall they just continue to impress me one thing that stands out to me you know we have it says we have 25 miles range which i believe is probably fairly accurate based on our consumption and what appears to be left we've gone 124 miles that's roughly 150 miles of range and if you remember when we left it changed to say we had 159 miles of range mm -hmm. pretty spot on to what it had and that was we granted we used more to go up and gain some coming down but every trip's that way you're gonna have ups and downs you're gonna have gains and and higher uses pretty accurate I thought that was pretty accurate so I'll give Ford uh, props for being able to calculate the distance pretty well and pretty accurately so anything else I don't think so cool hey thank you for coming and watching um, hopefully this helps you uh, with what you're wanting to get out of this for me and Richard I think both of us it was just curiosity right okay. it was killing the cat you know and <laughs> I wanted to know. I wanted to know for myself. I can watch videos all day, but I wanted to tow the trailer I tow. I wanted to tow my physical trailer and see what it is because everyone wants to do range tests with flat tra flatbed trailers or trailers that, that aren't what most of us use to go day-to-day -day camping or do recreational things. And so now I know. I know what my trailer does in this truck. I can get about 150 miles, zero to 100, which Granted that we're not going to go 150 miles because we need a buffer on either end, but 
pretty darn close. Yep. So I appreciate Richard for letting us do this, taking his day. So please, again, leave your comments in the in the comment section. Let me know um, if you're just throwing hate. Well, you're welcome to leave them, but um, please, let's just be constructive and give me your thoughts. I want to know what you what you think um, about it. Things that maybe we could do if we did another one. What we could do better to better um, provide you the information you're looking for and to uh, make sure that we get the information we want and that you do too. Um, anyways, Preston and Richard, thank you for stopping by Preston Go. Please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, to my friend Cody, who's probably not gonna watch, but smash that like and subscribe. Um, we'll talk to you guys on the next one. Thank you.